I was a media buyer, which means I bought radio and television, and salespeople came in and actually gave me t-shirts, uh, balls, uh, radios, pictures, and I thought, okay, so I stored them. So I love the industry, love the people that were in the industry, and said, what am I going to do with all this? So we'll better start a museum. Went to the Arizona Broadcasters Association and the women in radio and television and asked them to support this idea. And both said, okay, gave us some seed money. So indeed, I, we started calling the TV stations for equipment and Buck Owens costume and photos, Mary Jo West costume. People were so generous to respond. We have a group of 20 people on our board who've been with us for almost the 15 years. In this museum, we do not have a full-time person who will guide you along, but if six or more persons come in, we will have one of our wonderful uh, board member, whether they're on radio or TV, guide you and give you all the folklore of the museum. Our mission is to make sure that the broadcast material that had been used in the last 50 to 100 years is preserved in Arizona. We have a great history. Wallace and Ladmo, and Wallace is still among us and a great broadcast person who does back the museum, who's done many, many things for us, that signing his book, uh, giving people the background of the broadcast uh, industry, and they've been on the air, had been on the air for 37 years, 38 years, the longest running children's show in the United States, and we're just honored. And Tanya Tucker lived here. That was another thing that pulled us into this area, meant for us. She used it as an apartment when she and Glenn Campbell were having uh, problems. Uh, she had a friend who put her up here, the gentleman who actually built the building, and he gave it to her, and she stayed here for a couple of months. And we have a book here that records that. So this was her apartment. It all fit. I mean, when it fits, it fits. For legends, it has to be Bill Close on the news, certainly on our news. Uh, he was the gentleman who was held up in 1982, uh, where a gunman came in, Mr. Gwynn, I believe, Joseph Gwynn, and, you know, put a gun to his head and said, hey, I need to take over the 5 o'clock news. And as well, he was also rattling religious, fanatical uh, material. But Bill Coase just very calmly uh, let him ramble until, you know, police came in place and everything was peaceful. Mr. Gwynn went to a mental hospital, I believe. Bill Coase is still around. When I look at the people that come up, who are interested, as you just saw, uh, four people from Ohio, how interested they were in the museum. Just take a look at our uh, reception book and look at the comments that they put. We have books full from all over the world who come up and give us comments in the museum. I don't ask for comments, but when I see it, like there was one from UK just the other day that I read, well, this is, I used to work with some of this equipment in England. And now you have it. Oh, it was wonderful to see this. I mean, I almost want to cry when I read things like that. And when you go through the books, you'll see that uh, that's just part of what we are aiming for. Nothing else except that you come up. It's free. We never want to charge. We get Boy Scouts, Girl Scout, uh, university people, church, social, seniors. Come on up. We, we will, if you have six or more people, we will take you through the museum and have a personality do it. I would definitely say you will enjoy it. And what's wonderful, too, is I've seen this happen. When the Boy Scouts came up, and they came up with families, the Boy Scouts played on the machinery, on the TV machinery, which we invite them to do. Bang it, hit it, because, you know, they get restless, because 
even though they work, we're not going to use them. And we invite the children to play with them. And the parents go walking around and see Sarah Vaughn's photo and uh, handwritten autograph and um, many celebrities that there was a gentleman called Frank Pollock. He knew an awful lot of people, Ella Fitzgerald, all autograph which were donated to us. So the parents can walk around and feel very historical and things that they might remember. And the children, we want them to get a sense of it, but they also can play on the uh, cameras and the boards, TV boards. And even we have microphones, if they want to sing into the microphones, welcome. We are located at beautiful Fifth Avenue, 7150 East Fifth Avenue. And we are on the second floor. Is it Peter Tier that we pronounce it that way? It's very cozy. As I said, it was Tanya Tucker's apartment. And as you walk in, it's very homey. Thank you.